Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. Ben and Jerry, the two-headed California king snake, just shed out and looks absolutely incredible. And speaking of incredible, I think we're gonna have an incredible day. What do you guys say? We just push our problems aside for the next 12 or 15 minutes, have a wonderful day together. It's gonna be a busy one. Let's jump into it. As I was walking by, I can see some vermiculite in this top box right here, which was actually the first clutch of eggs that was laid. No, wait a second. You can actually see a little snake moving. What I was gonna say is usually when you see vermiculite, smudge up top. That means a snake is hatched out. Uh, in this case, it is hatched. Uh, that was our first clutch. I'm going to go grab Jay because this is something I definitely want to take you guys on the journey actually seeing these animals. So I'll get him. We'll get right back here and check those babies out. All right, Jay is ready. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at these crazy monkeys and see what we got. Oh my gosh. A bunch of little Brooks King snakes. This was actually a jelly Brooks bred to an albino or a double. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Obviously, what it is, and this is kind of crazy, the genetics behind peanut butters and jellies and stuff like that, it's a little bit confusing because it's an incomplete dominant, but it's also kind of an allelic animal. Essentially, what happens is if you take an albino to a peanut butter, you can get jellies, which are like an albino peanut butter. Regardless, the fact is, is that what we have here is we have a couple peanut butters right here that are a little bit more peanut butter looking. They just look almost faded and then of course we have a bunch of normal brooks kings as well there's kind of a hodgepodge of everything and what happens oh look at this egg right here see all those bubbles those bubbles are actually a fresh snake just starting getting ready to hatch so that looks like that's the last one that's out of the clutch and brooks kings actually hatch in about 52 days as opposed to 60 days so it's weird that our first colubra clutch was actually a brooks king snake but look at how unbelievably beautiful these guys are i am super excited so we're still probably 10 or so days away from the next clutch is to hatch but nevertheless, the first baby colubrids of the year. How awesome is that? Truly, truly amazing. Oh my God, you see that? Holy cow, it's actually coming on the egg right now. Unbelievable. Seeing a little baby hatch like that, how incredible. We got a birthday party happening over at the Reptarium. It's really awesome. Lori's always excited because she orchestrates the birthday party. I just come in and do like a 45 minute presentation or something like that. But then I have a couple more tours right after that. Uh, open for the Reptarium tonight. Busy day for sure, but we're gonna get it all done and have a great time. fun as always. You gotta love birthday parties, especially with little girls. They just bring so much energy. <laughs> so presentation part's done. Now they're eating and having cake and ice cream and on to the next thing. My name is Madison and I wanted to shout out because it's selfish. Hi, my name is Alexia T and I wanted to shout out because I want to be famous. First birthday party in the book. We have two tours today. First one starts in a few minutes. So we'll get this wrapped up. Get back over to BHB because we've got a bunch of work to do over there in between the tours. A uh, hectic day, but I love days like today. Oh, and by the way, later on tonight when we're open at the Reptarium, we're gonna actually try to feed Lucy, who is just starting to go into shed a little bit, so I hope she's gonna eat. But we're also gonna feed Daisy, and we're gonna feed Butterscotch while we're open. People love that stuff, I love it. It's amazing to get the reaction, so, but that's later in the vlog. All right, my tour is in the house. You guys are from the Boston area. I love that part of the country. So uh, it is your birthday present to come here, so happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, we won't tell you what age, you know, probably like in his 20s or something 40. like that. It's my 40th. <laughs> it's your 40th. And you wanted to say something to your children. Hi, Isabel. Hi, Winnie. We're here at the Reptarium. All right. Well, we'll make sure to have fun for you guys, too. And uh, next time he has to bring you guys out, uh, what do Definitely. you say we just jump into it? Oh my gosh, guys. I tell you what, I actually went through the ball pythons. We've got two beautiful clutch, including this Lemon Blast Extreme Gene Animal. Oh my God, I love this snake. She produced such great babies last year, uh, but I do have a little bit of an issue. I actually went to go set up a couple egg boxes with my hatch right, realized that we didn't get our shipment of hatch right in. It's gonna be in in a couple days, so that means any clutches I get today, obviously I wanna pull, as well as what I get in the next couple days, I'm gonna have to set up differently. So I figure, you know, maybe you don't have the ability to get hatch right. Uh, I wanna take you on what I used to do with vermiculite and still work. So let's go ahead and set up a couple egg boxes with vermiculite. I'll take you along on the process. Let me just start by saying, why I use hatchrite is that when it comes to python eggs, they're a little more delicate than colubrid eggs. And what I mean by that, you want the humidity to be 90 or 95%, but ideally you want to be sitting on a dry surface. That's why sometimes you'll see like an incubator box that has like those light grades on it with like toothpicks with the eggs. It's just, that's a pain in the butt. So what happens with the hatchrite is they take a perlite, 
dry perlite and they mix a gel isomer, water isomer in it. So basically when you're setting those eggs down, you're setting on dry perlite. The water isomer keeps the humidity up at 90, 95%. If you don't have it, which I don't today, you can use vermiculite. You can get vermiculite at almost any garden store. And what you want to do is mix this a little drier than you would mix a colubrid. So remember, I'm going to pour this in here. I'm going to mix the water in. I want it to clump really good, but I don't want to get any water out. So let me explain. You know, basically cut back about 10% of the water. So again, when you think that it's kind of going to clump, you want it almost to not clump 100%. That's going to be enough humidity, but then those python eggs aren't going to be sitting on damp vermiculite, which which is really important because you could lose your eggs that way. And back to my ball python clutch. Again, this is an extreme lemon blast, which again has that reduction of pattern. And this one was actually bred to a Mojave bee calico. So it's absolutely got crazy genetics. Gonna be really wild when this clutch ashes. So I am super excited that this girl laid a beautiful clutch of eggs. I'm just gonna have to somehow get her unwinded here which will be okay. Well, just come on, mama. It's okay, sweetheart. You did so good. Look at those eggs right there. Woo-hoo, that's beautiful. All right, girl, time to give them up. There you go. There you go, sweetie. There it is. I'm just gonna put you right over here, mom. Oh, it's okay, mama, it's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and take these eggs right here. Oh, again, we'll just go ahead and set them right in here. Gonna have to get a couple of these eggs off because they're a little bit high, but we got two, four, six, seven good eggs. I tell you what, seven good eggs with all of those genetics, we could have some crazy stuff out. Super excited about that, but we do have one more ball python clutch to pull today. Uh, I love it, man. I tell you what, this season has been a dream come true. This next one is kind of interesting because remember the pastel crystal male that the first couple clutches were infertile and then we got a fertile clutch but we weren't sure that he was the father because another male was in. This is actually a pinstripe and it's bred to that pastel crystal and no other male. So these are either going to be infertile or I don't know what to say. But maybe he isn't infertile this year and oh yeah. Look at this, guys. There's definitely no problem with fertility with this monkey right here. And again, the only male that was in with this female was the pastel crystal. So that is absolutely incredible. She has a load of eggs. That is a big snake with a big clutch of eggs. I'm gonna go ahead, get these eggs out over here. We're definitely gonna to have to candle these ones because they're outside the clutch, but it looks like she is wrapped around a monster clutch of eggs. This one may be the largest clutch of the year. I'm calling it right now. My largest clutch this year was 12 eggs. The largest last year was 13 eggs. I think this is gonna rival it. So what do you think? Let's go ahead and see. Okay, mama, you ready? Woo! Oop, well, maybe, okay, it may not rival it, but that's still a beautiful clutch of eggs. We're just gonna slowly get these out. And again, I'll just have to can all these. Oh, mama, don't you come and bite me. No, mama, no, sit back, sit back. Okay, I know sometimes these moms, they're protecting their eggs. They don't want you to take them away. So you have to be really careful of her. Oh, jeez, come on, mom, relax a little bit right there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, just slowly get these away. And that's a great mom, that she's protecting her eggs. And again, in the wild, she would certainly do that. But we proved last year by leaving the eggs with the mom that maternal incubation isn't the best. We had a really low hatch rate. The mom was really beat up after all of it. So I'm gonna just get these last eggs out. And oh my God, there are a lot of eggs. This one isn't even gonna fit in one egg box. I'm gonna to have to have two egg box for this clutch right here. Okay, mom, it's all right. Oh, just come on. I'll tell you what, these guys are crazy. So let's see what we got. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13. Oh my gosh, I called it the biggest clutch. It didn't get bigger than 13 from last year, but it was our largest clutch of this year, which previously was 12 eggs. So mama, you did a great job. I cannot wait till these hatch because now we know the pastel crystal is not infertile and we have like three more clutches coming from him. So I am super excited about this one. And again, what you're always trying to do is find that little air bubble with the embryo in it. So oftentimes you'll see this network of veins and you'll notice I'll even shake the egg back and forth really lightly and you can see the bubble actually move back and forth. And right in the center of that bubble is oftentimes that little red dot. And look at this one. You can actually see the little zygote. You can see that little black dot right there. That's a little tiny baby snake. You guys know that I'm into sneakers, not only snakes. As a matter of fact, me and Noah have talked about doing like a sneaker and snake type of Instagram or something. Regardless, anyways, I got a new pair of sneakers that I was pretty excited about. I haven't showed Lori, certainly wouldn't tell Lori because she won't like them, of course. And uh, I haven't showed Noah either, so he's gonna be surprised. As a matter of fact, I might just leave him on his desk and see if he finds them on his own and just see what it is. But uh, I'm pretty excited about these. They are cool as could be. Take a look at these. Ooh, yeah, baby. These are sexy. These are the new Yeezys. Uh, oh my gosh, these things are nice. 
So uh, yeah, I just thought I would share with you guys. Again, I love sneakers, so when these guys came out, I just thought they were cool. I haven't really bought a pair of Yeezys in, I don't know, probably a year, year and a half, but uh, I think the last pair I bought were Zebras, but uh, I do like Yeezys, but uh, it got a little bit overhyped, if you know what I mean. But these ones came out and I thought, ooh, these are sexy, so uh, there you have it. Some sneakers, we'll see what Noah thinks when he comes in. I tell you what, every now and then I just go through some of the raising racks that Eric is actually putting together, and I tell you what, these colubrids that are gonna be future breeders are ridiculous, and I just wanna show you a few things that really popped out at me. Uh, I could probably spend two hours doing it, to be totally honest with you, but this is actually a granite Max Max or a San Luis Potosi King Snake, but typically they're almost like saddled like a corn snake, but these guys are actually polygenically bred for this granity look to them. Absolutely incredible. Something I've been working on for, I don't know, probably like 15 years or so. There's been some other people working on the granite Max Max as well, kind of like parallel projects, but nevertheless, we're getting some really ridiculous ones. This one should be ready for next year and is insane. This next one is amazing. I remember when we hatched this one out, this is actually a candy cane to Sarah. The Tessera is those kind of racing stripes and so on like that. And then the candy cane is again, a polygenically bred kind of higher white albino corn snake or a melanistic corn snake. When you put them together, it just makes for a really cool high contrast and amazing pattern corn snake. I've talked about it a million times how my real love for snakes started in the woods and around my local house catching garter snakes. And weirdly enough, if my memory serves me correct, which it may not, I swear to goodness that I used to see albino garter snakes in the backwoods of my house. Now, again, it might just be a fantasy that I've created in my head. I have no idea. But the truth is, I love albino garter snakes, and this is actually an albino Great Plains or a Radix garter snake. So this is a female that's coming up for breeding next year. We're gonna breed her to a snow, which is an aneurthristic and an amelanistic, and this one actually is het for snow. So we can produce some pure white babies with red eyes. This snake here, every single time I open up its bin, I just absolutely trip out. I mean, it is literally pink pink, green, and white. I mean, a snake that looks like an Easter egg or something like that. It's incredible. And it's actually a coral snow motley corn snake. The motley in the snow are, of course, recessive mutations. There's actually three recessives total. And then that coral is a polygenically bred trait for that beautiful pink coloration. And then the green just is kind of part of the color of a snow corn that sometimes comes out on Unbelievable. I mean, this is literally a, one of the craziest snakes I've ever seen in my entire life. When I first started breeding snakes when I was just a kid, this was always like one of my pinnacle animals. Of course, this is a Blair's Phase gray banded king snake from West Texas. I tell you what, that is just a stunning animal. Again, I used to just think one day I hope I can even own one, let alone being breeding these for now a couple decades or more and to have some coming up that are absolutely incredible. Next year, these guys should be ready to breed and I cannot wait to produce not only Blair's face but Alterna face too which doesn't have the big orange bands almost looks like a banded rock rattlesnake these guys are stunning last colubrid I'm going to show you because I again I could stay here all day just showing these things off because I just am in love with them is this albino reverse oka tea scaleless corn snake oh my gosh that thing is ridiculous looking of course the albino and the scaleless corn are both recessive mutations and then the reverse oka tea is basically just the reverse of a normal Okatee, which is albino, and the Okatee is actually a geographic range of Okatees that have really cool patterns, really dark saddles, and of course when you put it into albino, those dark saddles turn into big white saddles, and then of course you take away the scales and you just get one ridiculous animal. Let me know down in the comments which one of these guys you like the best, and if you'd like me to keep doing these type of updates, because I absolutely enjoy them myself. Here you go. What do you think? So it's J Dog 1 A R T Y R E. What is this? Did you get some new shoes? Okay, no. Got it. <laughs> these are new shoes? No, they're like okay. sold these from your bedroom. J Dog 1 Party. I believe it. Alright, let's see what they are. Yeezys. Oh, right, God, I these are one. sweet, dude. I know. Right? Are these the reflective yeah. ones? These are non reflective. Are you sure? Yeah, these are non reflective. They don't reflect? No. Oh, ho, ho. But they're still sick though. They kind of remind me of the, the old ones, man. I know, the Pirate Blacks. I've been lacking on my shoe game recently. I haven't been buying anything. I haven't even been paying attention. I've been just working. Working, working for you guys. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoy. But this is a nice shoe. I like, you know, you can't go wrong with black shoes. Very, just, you know, black goes with everything. So this is a great shoe. It looks nice. And yeah. Yeezys feel great too, so. Yeah, I love them. I'm excited. Think nice. I'm gonna like them? You know, I actually don't think she'll hate them. Let's go I, see. 
All right, let's do it. Come on. What? You want to, uh, we got you something. We got you a pair of cool shoes for you. We got you a present. This, these are She's got a knife my, in her hand, be I careful. I got a knife and Nancy chicken. <laughs> we got you a present. Do not, not get me a present. You already like have them? these. I do not have yes, those. Yes, you do. Where's your from? Do you? Gray Yeezys. These are black. Gray. Charcoal, whatever. These are black. These are black. We you already have like three pairs of these. Are these yours or no? These are dad's. Of course they are. Does he look at the shoe? Three pairs. The shoelaces are reflective. Oh, they are. Oh, great yeah. for when you're running at night. Yeah. <laughs> They'll see your shoelaces. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you approved. So, you like them? No, I don't. How much were those? They're like 200. <laughs> they were like $20. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Been so busy today that Bruce took over this last tour. I'm coming over there to check on you guys. See how you guys doing? How you doing? Hey. You, guys, you guys having a good time? Oh, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, I'll hang out with you guys until we're open here, all right? All right. Where are you guys from? Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Yeah. Awesome. They got uh, my guy Carve out over here. Hey, guys, you got Bella? Yeah. Love it. All, right. all, right. all right, we're going to have a good time. And we open up in the Reptarium in like 15 minutes. All right, what a hectic morning, but absolutely amazing. I have a feeling it's going to be a busy day today, even though it's a beautiful day outside. I just have that feeling that uh, there's there's gonna be a lot of people. We'll see what happens. Laura, you ready to go? I'm ready. <laughs> Alright, it's that time. We're gonna go ahead and feed Lucy. Uh, wish me luck. Hopefully she'll eat. Hopefully she doesn't eat me. Uh, let's, uh, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Lucy went well, really good. She's absolutely an amazing snake. Uh, next up is Daisy. So uh, she's definitely not as high energy, but she's still an awesome snake. So let's feed her. Come on, come on, girl. Come on. Now she's like ready. Whoa! 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 Next up is Butterscotch. What I'm hoping is I can get her to strike out and then I can maybe toss her the rabbit and see if she actually catches it in the air. Uh, or she will bite Bruce. Not sure what's going to happen, but either way it'll be fun. I wish I could see her. I don't know where she is. Keep it to the left, though. Oh, I'm Is she moving? Come on, sweetheart. Oh, shit. Here she comes. Hey, hey, over here. Over, over. That's okay. You're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, good. Here, hey, hey, look over here. Look over here. Look over here. All right, here we go. <laughs> good job, Bruce. That was really good, man. Seriously. Everyone give Bruce a big round because he saved some people's lives tonight. He saved your life tonight. I hope you're happy. <laughs> Never buy the front row seat tickets to a big snake feeding. Well, guys, everyone lived. Everyone's good. You guys like it? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, my God. I love that. That is just so exciting. It's good. And then Lucy's over here crushing food. What a night at the Reptarium. All right, so as things are winding down here at the Reptarium, I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog. Spend some time with my patrons that are just having a good time. We got Salt out, we got Perdita out, we got Bella, we got all kinds of good stuff. So I wish you a great day. Absolutely love your support. You mean the world to me. Your beautiful faces are amazing. Do me a favor, be kind to someone, and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.